Hi ladies and gentlemen, my name is Josh Mendoza and I will be teaching you how to add additional airport maps to the navigational display of the Quality Wing 787. Now in order to add additional airport maps, you're going to have to download a few things. I've linked those down below in the description uh, and I will be also going to the websites in the tutorial today. I'm going to go ahead and be directly linking this file. This is for the Airport Design Editor X um, and it comes with an additional function, the export for XML function. You will need the version that I have listed here. Um, it may be released in a future version, but f currently as it sits, I do not know where that's at. Um, so we're going to go ahead and we're just going to be downloading the beta version uh, that I will be providing down below. Now, it will ask you for to install a key. Um, this key, you can just run for the 15-day uh, the evaluation license if there's only a few short airports you want to use, but beyond that, you will lose functionality for these tools. Um, if you intend to use uh, the, the ADX, uh, ADEX um, enough, I would just highly recommend supporting the developer and purchasing it just so you can have these functions in the future um, and, and being able to use all that. You will also need to download the SDK. Um, for Service Pack 1, and then in, once you have that installed, then you will need to download um, the Service Pack 2 update for it. You will need it because you will, it's how uh, ADE connects in and exports everything you need it to export. So make sure you have those downloaded. Um, if you do not have the acceleration add-on or the um, uh, deluxe edition of FSX. Uh, now Steam Edition, I'm not sure how that is. I actually had to download this because Steam Edition was not wanting to work uh, and did not install the full SDK entirely. So make sure you have this. I will link this down below this page. It's on FS Developer. Um, and make sure you just install that. So you can see that I have two zip files right here. I have the SDK for Service Pack 1 as well as the ADE zip file. So what you're going to want to do is for the ADE file, we're going to create a folder here. We'll call it ADE, and we'll go ahead and open that. Um, from here, just drop these in there, or, or you can select the Extract To function and select this folder. Okay, now that those are moved over, we can go ahead and close the zip file. We don't need that anymore. And then for the service pack one, uh, the SDK for the service pack one, you can go ahead and just go to the flight simulator folder uh, for FSX. Um, now this is only pertinent to people who have the standard edition of FSX uh, with, n with without the acceleration add-on and um, for people who do not have um, or who have Steam Edition and for whatever reason the full SDK has not been installed. So you're going to find the place for you to place this SDK within your program files x86 folder. Scroll down to Steam. Select Steam Maps. Go to Common and find FSX. Inside of there you'll find the SDK and you can go ahead and drop the folder in there. Now that we have those installed um, and the SDK placed in there, we can go ahead and open ADE. Inside here you'll find um, just the folder that says beta. You can go ahead and open that and you're going to want to run airportdesigneditor.exe. Now this may pop up. Just select more info and click run anyway. Now it's going to ask you which version uh, to select. You can just go ahead and select in between FSX or prepared v3. Um, for this case uh, the quality wing 787 is only out for FSX so it's just going to make your life easier if you select FSX. Now I've already selected my uh, eva selected to choose to have an evaluation, so it's going to tell me that I have X amount of days remaining on my evaluation. Uh, so you can just hit next on here. You it wants you to enter your initials, so for me I'm just going to enter in JM for uh, Josh Mendoza. You don't really need to mess with this too much. Just kind of have that if you want it to um to save a little bit more frequently than five minutes. You can go ahead and change that here. It'll automatically save. Your scenery.config folder, just verify that that's true by clicking the three uh, ellipses right here. And it should be located in here. I can't tell, so we're going to go ahead and pop up here and just copy this folder path right over here and check. 
and you see that scenery.config is there. Now it wants you to select where the uh, where the flight sim is going to be located. You can let it try and find it, but okay, there you go, it found it. If not, you will just do the same thing as we've done here. You'll just click the three ellipses right here. It'll ask you to find the location. For us, we're actually fortunate enough that it found the location, so we can just paste this right here. Scroll down until we find SDK. And then inside the SDK, we go to the uh, Environment Kit and the Terrain SDK. Once you've done that, just select the folder, and it'll it'll work for you. That's for the uh, SHP2 VEC compiler. And then for the VG, uh, BGL compiler, we're going to go ahead and select the ellipses on that one select out of the environment or back to the environment kit and just go to the BGL compiler SDK just select the folder and hit next from there it'll have found the folders and you'll be able to run ADE no problem these are all personal preference I'm gonna go ahead and go with the uh, the units I use in America but you can use whatever units you wish to use it's it's all personal preference. It will not affect how the airport appears on the navigational display. You can choose where the uh, where everything is saved. I'm going to be putting things inside the projects folder. And you just hit next here. And you are all good to go. I'm going to go ahead and show you how to get the airport that you want to use. For today's example, we're going to be using Sacramento International Airport. Now, this will work with 100% effectiveness on SOC airports. This may not work effectively with third-party add-on airports depending on how they've structured their BGL files and other things. But this is an easy way to find it. So for Sacramento we're just going to type in the ICAO code and click there. You'll see that it found the airport with no issues and we're just going to select the open button. Now it may take a few minutes to load so while you're waiting for it to load, you can go ahead and grab yourself a coffee or a tea. All right, so it is now loaded, and you can see that the airport display is fully there and loaded, as well as some additional lines and all of that fun stuff. Don't worry about those additional lines. You do not need to remove them. You just go up to Tools, Export for X. Just hit OK. Select where you're going to be placing it. I'm going to create a new folder and call it exports. Go inside that folder and just name it the, th the four digit ICAO the airport is going to be. When you do that, it'll complete the export. The XML is ready to be used within the aircraft. So we're going to go to the ADE folder, select beta, and select exports. You'll see inside of here that our XML is ready to be used. We're going to be moving that to the Quality Wings Nav Data folder within the 787 folder of the Quality Wings folder inside the FSX root directory. So all you're going to do is go to FSX, Quality Wings, 787, Nav Data, Airport Data, and you're just going to drag and drop. It's as simple as that. The airport is now in there and can now be loaded within the sim. I suggest you go ahead and open it up in SIM, which I'm going to do here shortly, to verify that it looks all correct. So just boot up the SIM of your choice. For us, it's going to be Steam Edition. Now that FSX is loaded, we're just going to go to the Free Flight tab, select the aircraft, You're going to select the location. And then hit fly now. While the aircraft will be loading for a second, this is a good time to go ahead and verify that it works. So we're just going to go down to the CDU, go to route, and select our route. So for today, all we need to do is put in the departure airport of Sacramento and wait for the IRSs to be aligned. Once the IRSs have been aligned, you can go ahead and move the ECAS display to the other side. 
and scroll on down to the five mile or less range and verify that everything there is what you need it to be. As you can see, this is successfully exported and is ready to be used in the flight sim in a real flight. Thank you very much for watching the video. If you have any friends that want to know how to do it, be sure to share this video with them. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like it. And if you got lost or stuck anywhere, be sure to comment down below and let me know and I can go ahead and try and assist you. My name is Josh and thank you very much once again.